Hello. Sorry, we're a week in Lou. Um, oh, no, that's the wrong way around. <laughs> a week yeah. behind? Uh, yeah. Something like that, I don't know. Um, it's good that the official um, Wheels and Wings matching shirts have arrived. That's yep. good. Cordy boys. Yeah. What number of podcasts is it? 23? I think 22? it might be. 23, I think. 23. Welcome to episode number 23. Big up yourselves. Um, so, where have you been? I've been to South Uist, uh, which is the Out of Hebrides. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. I did apologise. I did apologise. Yeah, so what were you doing there? I can't tell you. Exactly that. what were you doing there? Um, <laughs> working. That's working. Yeah. So what does that involve, though? <laughs> um, don't forget, this week, you're not allowed to bounce your leg. I... I can't. I, it's not like I make a decision to go right. I'm now going to bounce my leg. Um, it's an actual thing. Look it up. Google it. It's called restless leg syndrome. Oh, is it? Yeah, I have a syndrome. I probably have. Probably I think have you've a, got more than one, mate. Probably got a couple of syndromes going yeah. on somewhere. Yeah. Um, not all of them needs a need a twelve step program <laughs> to get them sorted. Um, but yeah, it's just it's one of those things. My legs are just they they go. I've had it for my entire life, and I've had people tell me to stop doing it for my entire life. Yeah, it's not happening, is it? Well, I can't stop it. It's it's out. It's a, not a mind thing. It's just like as soon as as soon as, because like I'm thinking about it now. Yeah. Don't shake your leg. And they're not. And they're not. And as but as soon as I stop thinking about not shaking my leg, <laughs> my legs just start shaking. It's so annoying. So annoying. Um, if anybody else has that, then please, please jump in in the comments and and um, you know defend me and there's all sorts of you know all sorts of like remedies and things and uh, what do I get like, so, is it like milk of magnesia or something? <laughs> loads, of, loads of bullshit remedies that have just never worked that doesn't that sound I'm, like I don't know what it was but something but I've tried everything it what about um, like luggage, luggage straps that would work that would work like my idea for horse new horse trailers. <laughs> yeah, that's St- right. Strapping the horse to a to a flatbed trailer as opposed yeah. to letting it stand up. <laughs> Would you spatchcock it so it's like <laughs> yeah. no, because you you can't you, you can't you'd, you'd break it, wouldn't you? Yeah, because horse I'm sure horse legs can only go to, so far to like seventy degrees. They don't have to then go to one eighty, can they? <laughs> um, yeah. If you know, let us know. Um, but yeah, no. So I, um, so, yes, I wouldn't spatchcock it. I'd lay it on its side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. Good. Have you had a good week? Yeah, it's good. So what have you been doing? I've Good been work. working in yeah, the Hebrides. So yeah, doing? but you know it's like droney stuff. And and the reason I can't talk to you about it is I have a security clearance. So you can imagine people... Fight, say, Do you know, it's like ch- chopsing away. It might be stuff in the public domain. Yeah. Like, look up what happens... In the Hebrides on South Uist, have a look um, um, because it's in the public domain. But it's not very trustworthy if I'm gobbing Doing up the same, podcast like, about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so that's fair. It's isn't not because it? Russia could be listening, couldn't they? Russia could be listening. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah. If, so, you, if you're listening, Russia, let us know, <laughs> let us know in the comments. Dubrov, Dubrov. No, I don't know any Russian. Do you know any Russian? Um, y- yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so no then. And. Uh, What's what's no no's da? Is it da? Yes. Das, yes. yes. Yeah, da. Yeah. And no, I don't know anything. Don't yeah, know so any. that was that. Um, God, did you know they closed the M6 Friday night completely? So I was driving from Glasgow Airport. So I flew from Ben Bekula Airport to Glasgow. That was um, delayed an hour because um, they had something wrong with the airplane. So I was supposed to leave at 10 to 4, and right. I ended up leaving just after 6. 10 to 4. Yeah. Um, uh, so it's like, then jump in the hire car. Citroen C4. Oh, that, nice, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was nicer than I'd... Because I rocked Was it a, not a Suzuki? Oh, that was in the Hebrides. I had a Suzuki hybrid thing. I sent you a photo of it. So while you're... Well, you're driving around the Hebrides, and then you, another one to yeah, and then home. leave that at the. That's cool, you know. The, the, so single track roads everywhere yeah, on yeah, South yeah, Uist. Yeah. There, there are some dual carriage uh, dual roads. What's that? Two carriageways. Yeah, yeah, but it, a lot of it is single carriageway yeah, with passing nice. places. Nice. So 
you become quite good at, you can see this car coming, you go, because there's lots of passing places, you're going, there's one here, but I reckon I can make the next one. Yeah, that's so, the pilot in your thing. Yeah, you know, yeah um, and then it's pushing like, the envelope. Going, oh, come on. And you can, everybody yeah. on the, waves to each other. So even on the bits where you're not in passing places, everybody waves to each other. And what happened <laughs> last week, which just made me laugh, was there was a bin lorry right. with a driver, a guy in the middle, and a guy in the end. So three people across a flat screen, yeah. so, you know, windscreen. And all three of them go like this as you drive past. <laughs> <laughs> it's like everybody waves at everybody. And it's, Amazing. it's, it's oh. sort of nice. It starts off as like... Why are you all waving at each other? And you go, do you know what? It's quite nice. Yeah, I nice. like but it. But I think that's a Welsh thing as well. So back in Wales, used to just to wave at everybody in the cars going past. Because okay. that was all single track roads when, where, where I grew up. So, so it wasn't, was it? It was, yeah. Put out on that. It's all single lane. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a fucking nightmare. That's why I'm so good at reversing. <laughs> <laughs> so good at reversing because yeah. I did. I went, I reversed almost the same mileage as I went forward. So it was incredible. <laughs> what uh, you like at reversing a trailer? Oh, superb, like, yeah, really, really. Because, again, I just had to do it all the time. And I was one of those guys that I liked the challenge. So, like, even if there was a person in the car and I had, like, massive trailer discovering no, no, that, I was no, like, no, I'll do it. I'll I'm, do it. Your, I'm your boy. I'll and, they, <laughs> and they were like, uh, but there's one, like, just behind me. But no, no, don't worry about it. I've got it. I do like reversing trailers. So the whole, so do I. we won't get into the whole horse trailer thing again. <laughs> <laughs> We've done that to death. But, um, yeah, it once it clicks, hmm. it's like you almost, I, I, I don't know how you do it, but so the way I do it is I've, I don't think about the car. I just think about if I was just like um, maneuvering, if I could hold the end, the, the, the hitch from the trailer. Yeah. And just like move it around, so I just do whatever I need to do with the car, just to do that with the hitch. Is that how you think about it, or is that does that? I'm. I'm it sounds very complicated, but in my I head, think it's possibly overthinking. Very, there, very like. simple. It's like I just need to do whatever I need to do to make that hitch go where I want it to go, to make the trailer go where I want the trailer to go, and it just seems. But easy. But you need to worry about the car as well, don't you? Well, yeah, it depends how tight it is. If you've got plenty of space, you don't. Yeah, yeah, but, but you usually, you know, you've got, like, the Nova video, if anybody watched that who's listening, um, getting the trailer into that guy's driveway. I blew one of the tyres on the trailer, pulling it out, because it was, it was, I had an inch either side. It was, it was crazy, and there was just a bit at the bottom where it just caught the, um, one of the mud guards, pulled it and pulled it into the tyre, put a, put a little hole in it. That's annoying. Yeah, but it, fine because because the guy. The problem was was I got there. Where was this? Moldsworth. Um, what by your, your name? Yeah, spelled differently. Oh, um, I got D. there and the guy went, <laughs> "You're not going to be able to get that trailer up here." And I was like, "You fucking want to bet?" <laughs> <laughs> Let the games commence. Yeah, I was like, right, uh, well, let me just have a little, let me just have a little look, let me just size it, I don't know, let me just have a little go. I'd say, because if you, I was say, if you can just watch this bit here, and if you can just, you know, give me a shout there, and all that sort of stuff. And be a bit more positive. Yeah, yeah, he, he was like, <laughs> oh, no, I think we best, and I was like, well, I don't, just, you know, I just give me a little <laughs> go. Like, you know, you know, and I, yeah, I did it, smashed it, yeah. Yeah. I smashed the trailer. <laughs> smashed the trailer. <laughs> yeah, but I did it. Um, but that was very cool. You got a spare wheel yeah, for the way. trailer then? Yeah, but I didn't put it on because it's, uh, it's double axle. Okay. So you got four wasn't wheels. wasn't holding much weight with a Nova, was it? No. And, you know, I got um, still had three wheels. Bloody hell. Some there's a, cars there's a song in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was, uh, it was good. And I just put, so I just got to wait for my tie dye to come and replace the tire. Cool. It's 50 quid down the Swanee, innit? Yeah. For fuck's sake. Yeah. You should have just let them, you know, the guy push the Nova out and he wouldn't have had that problem. I know, yeah. Um, how it's an over? D- it was difficult good? to push it though because everything was completely sea soiled and the back two tyres were, were had holes like that in them so you couldn't put any air in them. Uh, so it would have been very difficult. How long had that thing sat there? 28 years. What? Yeah, amazing. That's amazing. Loads of people tried to buy it and stuff and it was just... It's, it, one of the beauties about having the old YouTubes is you can... Um, people can suss you out first. And see what's going to happen to their beloved car. Yeah. Rather than... Because, again, I mentioned this briefly on the video. that, And I am having a few problems with this at the moment. It's like Facebook Marketplace and eBay. 
it's a hellhole for selling cheap cars but like dearer stuff anything from like four grand five grand well maybe dearer than that probably six grand seven grand upwards fine because you just get like everything's a bit newer and nicer and you don't have to worry about some of the cheaper car problems yeah but anything cheap is just full of morons absolute morons idiots who think their car's worth more than it is is that no just don't don't, don't understand what they're looking at Uh, Uh, you know there's so because oh i see partly due to yeah me being on social media and sort of getting old cars running and stuff and i think people have you know watching so much of this that they're getting like oh we can do this i can do it and and then you know and they but they're miles where they don't understand that so they see like the Nova outside the workshop. Oh, he's fixing it. I can do that. It's like, yeah, but what about the going and collecting it? I've got a trailer. I've got a discovery. I've got yeah. all this. That was a day of my life that yeah. went out to collect it. You know, all this other stuff that goes on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I can do that. And then it's just it ends up being so many time wasters. Just yeah. Goes, it's a, a huge amount of time wasters and daft questions. Do you think this will drive home? <laughs> You know, and it's like That's sort of the whole point of the video. Yeah, and it's like, well, of course it, it it would, but that's massively illegal. And why don't you know that? Do you know what I mean? Why are you asking like, like you're asking for my permission or something? You know, yeah. it's just weird. It's just like you know, you you um, the car's fucked. Do you want to buy it or not? It's it's <laughs> it's not you know all the descriptions in what the car looks like and all the pictures and stuff are there. These massive holes in it. There's no more to be said. It's a very cheap car. Yeah, it shouldn't just be a, a you know these people trying to sort of romanticise it a bit and go oh it could be this could be that oh. people, people like um, what was the guy saying will you sell me the exhaust I'm like why why would I like the car's for sale I can't just go <laughs> I can't just go oh add on a little bit well oh I've taken the exhaust off because I sold it to someone you know what I mean it's just like no you just people I haven't got the time yeah. you'd have to pay for me to like make it worth my while to get the car out from where it is get it running again get it into the workshop get it in the air strip the exhaust off then organise either posting it to him or meeting him which you know it's all yeah. hours and hours yeah, I and can hours. mate but it'll cost you 1500 quid <laughs> yeah it's just yeah your exhaust is enough to make it actually worth my while I'd need to take 400 quid off you like <laughs> yeah, yeah. otherwise no you can't just buy the fucking exhaust buy the whole car that is weird you know it's not a scrapper it's not a scrap yard sorry yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah that's it yeah it is a scrap of them, but I think I might actually have a, a genuine guy that is um, is keen on it. So, um, and he says he's going to restore it, but I think he's going to go down the reshell route because he is a no. Because I, I briefly mentioned in the video Nova um, a breaker that I sort of know of, um, and I think he's got access to body cuts, okay, and or, or a, a complete shell um, swap. Which is exactly what that car needs, and it, you know the only way you could do it probably is with body cuts. You couldn't, you know, trying to make the bits of chassis and stuff. You could do it, but it'd be the ugliest thing in the world. Like it just, you know, <laughs> you, 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 the fab, to get it back to how Vauxhall stamped them out. You know what I mean? It'd be a humongous undertaking. Yeah. Nah. So I don't think. It, it, and at the end of the day, you've still got a Nova. Yeah, but not just you know. It'd be nice if it was a GSI, but it's not. It's one point two merits. Yeah. Where's your hair gone, by the way? Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, it got it cut off, isn't it? Look, so, looking faster. Looking good. Cheers, mate. Appreciate it. Um, just uh, welding the rascal. Right. And oh. head inside wheel arches quite often. Yeah. And because it's, it's, cause it's a van, it's, got, it's like the body is on top of the chassis. And your... Your so sorry, I need, I like to stand up when I'm when I'm doing the welding and stuff. So my, my head is quite often inside the sort okay. of so the floor of the van. So you there, do it on the lift. Sh- yeah, so you've got chassis rails and stuff either side of your head, but yeah. it's just the most comfortable. And you're sort of in there like that. And I was getting home, and I would have some fucking items in my head. <laughs> Just some <laughs> stuff in my head. Yeah. Pulling bits out, be like, ah! <laughs> and it'd just be like a bit of chassis or something, you know, or yeah. like a washer yeah. or something. I'd be like, this is doing my head in. So I just saw my ass with it massively one day because I, I was washing my hair and I, I scraped a bit of metal like right across the side of my head on my scalp. And I was like, right, that's it. Mm-hmm. Right, forget it. Fuck. And I almost like took my scissors to it there and then, but I didn't. Uh, went up to the hairdresser and I was like, mate. Last hair, please. Get it out of here. Yes, we did. But I'm liking it. The I'm next really morning, it. did you wake up the next morning, look in the mirror and go, what? Took a couple of days. Yeah, like, did it? Yeah. Because yeah. so you, you just forget, don't you? Because you, you can't see yourself. 
Yeah, but I think I think that's I think I'm, I, this is this is, this will be it for for me now. It's just so much easier to live with, yeah. and uh, uh, you know I do feel like I potentially look a little bit younger and stuff, and a bit more vibrant, and like I've got some life in me rather than. <laughs> Rather than like like homeless, yeah, homeless <laughs> stick of the dump trying to fucking weld his car. Yeah, um, so very yeah. good. Yeah, so that was that. That was that. Yeah, M six closed. M M6- six. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Yeah. So the weirdest thing. So I jump in this. So walk across um, in the rain, of course, in Glasgow to the Enterprise Car Place. Um, get the key. Really good because when it's a corporate hire. You just, they just don't care. They just give you the keys. You know, they don't come with you and say, yeah, yeah, have yeah. a look around it. And it's just like... It's so, so, line it up as a corporate eye, that's what you're saying, for an easy life, book it in as a business. Definitely. Nice. Like definitely. Because they, they, it's just like... Top tip. You know, first of all, if anything's wrong with it, they, they don't have to worry about arguing with you. Yeah, yeah. Because it's a corporation. But So, I just go over and went, how are you? And she went, oh, yeah, I'm fine. That's Scottish. I'm fine. And I said, what What time did you from, finish? She's from Johannesburg. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> oh, hang on. That's Northern Irish. Anyway, oh, she yeah. was fine. And, uh, uh, and I said, uh, um, name's Garrett. And she just gives me an did envelope. You do did you do the two fingers name's and the Garrett, two finger guns? And she just gives me an envelope with the key, like, but zero. Excuse me, sir. No finger guns in here. We'll not be having that. No finger guns. This is an airport. <laughs> That's an airport. Oh yeah, good point. Uh, and you just know, like your car is bay thirty-two or anything like that. It's just key. See ya. So you walk around going, oh, <laughs> it's dark. So you go, something's flashing over there. No. Nice. So jump in. <clears throat> I don't know about you, but I never have a problem with different cars. It's just they're all much of a muchness. Plug your phone in, CarPlay. That's easy. Modern cars. I do, that's a good point. Do you do CarPlay stuff very much? I don't like it. Don't you? No. I, it's so easy I've got, I've for got, me. I've got the Android. So I'm on Android. Okay. So I've used the Android Play, but I just, just don't like it. I've got my phone there anyway. I don't yeah, really understand that's true. what the difference. And it, like, you don't use any of the apps on the Android. You just use the music or the maps. You know or, I mean? the, so. or the phone or WhatsApp. Because or, that freaks people out. When you WhatsApp people, because you just you can talk, can't you, into the app? Oh, so you WhatsApp okay. people, you know, WhatsApp so and so. Funnily enough, one of the rugby players, um, my son's rugby player's friend's dad, when I said, "Can you just put your number in your phone and your name?" When I first met him, eight years ago or something, he put himself in as Gordon Knobhead, <laughs> and <laughs> when it says. Um, Oh, what's that message from Gordon Knobhead? <laughs> Which yeah. always amuses me. Probably. Yeah, but so you can WhatsApp people, and they go, I'm on the on the M8 coming yeah. out of Glasgow, and they go, oh, Why are you WhatsApping? You're driving. So I like that. Uh, um, anyway, so jump. It's to- a far cry from the old Nokia 3210s. You used to be able to wedge them between the top of the steering wheel and the and the sort of airbag like and you just have your phone in the middle of the steering wheel and you could just as you were driving just press the button yeah. on the phone. Well there was a point when people got they all got a little bit anal about concentrating on driving. Mm. I used to text and just steer with my knees. So much all it the makes, time. Make, making a SIG, changing yeah. a cassette and texting on a thirty two ten all yeah. simultaneously. And in in the fast lane, you know, yeah. not not bothered. It's, 85, it's, 90 mile an hour like. It's just about you know, making sure that you you put the right amount of tension in the right. We're back. Sorry about that. When um, um, I had to use the restroom. As yeah. Well. What What have you done to that toilet door? It had a normal, it had a normal jazz bar type door handle, and now it looks like something from a Dubai penthouse. <laughs> it's gold. <laughs> It's, but it's gold and modern. It's yeah, like a... it's very, it's a weird choice. <laughs> it's a weird choice. I didn't choose it. Maintenance did. Alad did. Maintenance, um, okay. So, so the, the um, he's, he's up against it, <laughs> bless him. Because, you know, to be fair to yeah. him, doing stuff like that, eats into his drinking time. You know? Absolutely. Having, having to fucking work for a living, like it does eat into his drinking yeah. time, you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, so it's like their door handle was fucked, and he's that like, doors are his speciality. So he was like, um, 
So I'll sort it, I'll sort it, that's fine, I'll sort it. So like, okay, it just makes a fucking song and dance out of them, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 I can't, the cheap screws, screws are cheap. It's cheap screws, I can't get it. Why do they supply cheap screws? It's like, mate, just, why have you bought that? But you, you, you live in the Nike world, don't you? So just fucking do it, mate. Yeah, just fucking do it, man. <laughs> shut up, get on with it. So, well, was, where's well, my hire well, car? Here's well, I was sat there eating a fucking packet of <laughs> yeah, I was just say. watching him. How old were they? 28 years old. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so, where's my hire car? Here's the keys. Plug yeah. in the car, play it onto the M8. Quick WhatsApp. Don't do that. Fast forward three hours. Fast forward, yeah, three and a half hours. And this sign comes up and it says M6 closed. Um, and oh, they're going. It's fair hey, you God, don't. Like, you don't mean closed. Yeah, that's, you know, that's another you, one, isn't it? Yeah. What you mean? What you mean is down yeah. to one lane. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah, and then, yeah. I, which wouldn't because it's late at night. It wouldn't matter too no, much. It's not, not a lot of traffic. You're no, still, you know, but it's, it's, fine. it's ten o'clock, and yeah. it's it just going. It's not closed. You don't mean. Be, you don't mean. It'd be mad for it to be closed. Sorry, are we still swearing? I've sworn about 30 times yeah, this episode. Yeah, we need but to I said, you don't mean actually close, so just ignore that, because everybody's still doing, you know, 85, so yeah. clearly. And it's in... I'm doing them... <laughs> I'm doing them, the, the mileage to the turn-off I need and the mileage to the various junctions, and I'm trying to do the maths on how many junctions... Because what they said was uh, closed at junction 21A, 22... And I'm thinking, it'll be fine. And I, d- I don't know which one I need <laughs> yeah. to go to Chester. It's always a gamble, isn't it'll, it? It'll be fine. Yeah. So it just Because everything goes on for ages past us. Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah, it'll, it'll be, be fine. fine. Yeah, fine. Um, turns out it's the one I needed. Ah. And it was closed. So, or, so you go from three lanes to two lanes to one lane to up a slip road. Nightmare. And like we're t- fucked in this country, oh aren't we? God, and then you take a load of diversions, and it spits going you past out someone's house, and, 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 that, it go- you know? and it's like, yeah, you can't do this anymore. So there you are. There we are. You're on another motorway. And it's yeah. like, what? Well, this isn't the M6. Yeah, yeah. And it's the M62. It's like, thanks for that. It's like here, have another motorway, but it's yeah. not the one I was on. And you get you carry on the motorway, and you get back to the M6 close. <laughs> and then, <laughs> then I'm going through the middle of Warrington because Satnav yeah. says, "Don't worry, I can sort this out." Yeah. It's like I don't believe you. Yeah. And now I don't know where I am, so I'm having to believe you. Yeah. I hate that. Yeah. Do you ever trust Satnav completely and just follow? Well, have you ever had ev- to do ev- that? Every single time. Every mm. single time. Trust Satnav. My 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 old man though. He carries in his car a tom tom a, a map. Uh, oh, an actual road map, the most up to date road map. The big ones, yes. like the book ones, you yes. get used to get from Esso. Yes. Oh, I remember. He carries I, one of those. Oh, that's massive nostalgia and, hit. I used to love those. And he dropped his car off at the workshop for me to do an MOT on last week, and my uh, brother-in-law um, was. <laughs> <laughs> it's only recently Did happened. that have to end up in a question <laughs> it's, it's a weird thing to say because um, it's, it's new um, but uh, he followed him behind him to pick him up so he went off the sat nav and my dad road atlas like you know just uh, but he's the king of the road atlas like he's always has been and just, just got there maybe I would say at least a good five minutes earlier yeah you know, it's, it, from an hour's trip is a lot I was just like, how have you done? He's just like, yeah, but you know which roads are, are actually faster at this time of day? You know, the sat will just take its traffic and you might get stuck behind lorries. So I, I, you know, but this, I, I know which roads He's are faster. He's got a point. And he does it, he is, does drive fast. That's why you see 16 wheeler articulated lorries wedged in between two Cotswold cottages, yeah. don't you? Spilling loads. Yeah. Speaking of spilling loads. <laughs> <laughs> You're a bad person. <laughs> Um, no, <laughs> Where's this I, going? I, I don't know. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> so one of the things that happened last week um, to flop over onto a bit of airplane stuff oh, was right. that um, I remembered uh, customer-based memory of <clears throat> flying 
at NJEP, at Euronato Joint Jet Pilot Training at Shepherd Air Force Base in Rolls Texas. Rolls off the tongue, that, doesn't it? It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, so there are all the different nations there training. I've mentioned it before. I've, I've put a picture up of the T-38, if you remember. Right. But I've forgotten that... Uh, so when you did a check ride, so you, you do phases of the course, and then you'd go to a place called check section, where they would do a check ride. So basically, have you passed this bit of the course? And it was terrifying. Mm. Check section. It had swing doors that you walk through. You walk over to the right. You look at a big program. You find your name. You find the name of the check pilot, as as in not from Czech Republic, <laughs> yeah, yeah. the guy who's <laughs> going to do the test. And then you have to wander around trying to find his desk. And you, walk, you stand in front of him and you go... I am here for um, you know the instrument check flight or the formation check flight or the whatever, and it was just a horrible, horrible place. The only other way you could have a, a check ride was with there were they called guest pilots, but the, they were sort of higher ranking or they they didn't work there, but they would do check rides because they were very experienced. When I'd finished the T thirty seven course, the last check ride. For the T-37, which is um, a straight wing, sit side by side trainer. <clears throat> um, my check ride was with a German colonel. But he was in his office, so they said, go, so go to, I can't remember his name. Um, Hans. <laughs> knees and bumps a daisy. <laughs> um, go to uh, um, Baron von Richthofen's <laughs> office. <laughs> Um, and knock on the door and wait for him to call you in, and then, he, then he, he he's expecting you. So you go. Th that was from his like PA. Hmm. So you knock on the door. And Back then, what was a German pilot doing in America as well? Ah, well, you see, so there's all the, all of the NATO countries. Yeah. Um, were trained Euro NATO joint jet pilot training, and at NJEP. Um, and Germany owns half of the airplanes there, so they are committed to oh, that NJ wow. program. Um, so um, they own half, half the airplanes. So the the boss of the the training school is all as an American colonel, mm -hmm. and the and the second um, down from the the boss is a German colonel. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So a knock on his door. <clears throat> well, they love that, don't they? <laughs> What do you mean? What do you mean? It's been like, I'm second and go, oh. <laughs> I'm not second. <laughs> Why can't we be first for once? <laughs> moving, <laughs> moving quickly along. So I knock on his door and say, come in. Yeah. And uh, he, no, he's bigger than that. <laughs> come in. Uh, so I come in and he had some stuff to do. So he points to the 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 seat on the other side of his desk, the chair, uh, in the behind his desk, and he's working. And he, he said, "Give me two minutes." And so I sat down, and so I'm just looking around, and behind his, behind him, on the wall behind his head, there's an enormous uh, print of a painting of an a Messerschmitt 109 rolling in on a Spitfire. And shooting the shit out of it. <clears throat> Whoa. And, and Which said, I'd imagine was slightly triggering for you. Well, it wasn't that. And this is my problem at the time. So he finished. He went, all right. He said, you OK? And I went, I said, that's very interesting. Bearing in mind, uh, he's about to do a check ride on me. Right. And it was in, it was the last check ride of the T-37 phase you had to pass that, and then you started the T-38 phase. So halfway through the course, <clears throat> I said, that's very interesting, sir, because um, I've only seen that the other way round. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he went, yes, maybe in your country. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I sort of, oh, fuck me and my mouth. It's like, really, did I say that? But, Amazing. Yeah, but anyway, got away with it. It's fine. It's past. mad, isn't it? But it's, that was interesting. We it's, it's weird how, like, with countries and stuff... Um, all friends now. Yeah. Um, I, it, maps. I've always just been astounded at how 
like maps show the world from different positions and the and the size of countries differently and things. Yeah. So if you like a, a map that sort of, I don't know, Africa might use. They're the center of it, and it's they're big, and you know that's and it's just yeah. you know, and then you look at us, and it's weird. Like we're in the center. It's like, why are we in the center? Like, yeah, because we're, we're not, aren't we? Yeah, we're not. But no. you know, we probably drew most of them, didn't we? But, well. That, that sort of links to another thing. So we had uh, a German flight commander. So there was a flight of uh, 40 student pilots mm-hmm. and instructors, and you had a flight commander who's in charge of them. And we had a German flight commander uh, in, in the T-38, and his name was Norbert Kniebel. And uh, <laughs> we're all, we called him Ebel. <laughs> <laughs> Ebel Kniebel. <laughs> Because you would. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. But he had a badge on his flying suit, and it was a a red shield-shaped badge, and up in the top left-hand corner was a tiny little... um, You know know the classic German eagle, sort of iron eagle? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And and then it was just a completely plain um, red badge. Nothing on it at all, but this tiny... Up to the sort of... Uh, northwest, if you like, in that corner there, there was this tiny little symbol of this German, uh, you know, Luftwaffe eagle, and and it and we all looking at it. And I said one day, I went, "That's a shit badge. It's just like, why is it so plain?" And he said, ah, "The reason for this is because this squadron, my squadron." I was going to stop doing that. (laughs) The reason was that his squadron squadron was due to be based in the UK in the Second World War. So once once they'd beaten us, his fighter squadron was going to... that had been formed to be based in the UK. And if you put a map of the UK on that red background, that little German eagle symbol fit beautifully up where sort of the Isle of Man is or somewhere like that or wow. sort of a bit further out and the, and the UK went around it wow how cool is that or you know how scary yeah. is that but fucking good luck with that Hans <laughs> <laughs> how did that work out for you Mr. Knees and Bumps a Daisy <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah so yeah I'd, I'd forgotten about that but um, mad. yeah that is mad isn't it it's weird it was it? great though that was just such that year was incredible because you you're all twenty. It was four years, wasn't it? Oh, sorry, not talking no. about the same thing. Sorry, no. it's too. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, that year was amazing. You did feel like you could like run the world because you were all twenty something. Yeah, yeah. All from all these various countries and like flying jets going downtown on a Friday night. After, so the O Club, which is the, am I boring you? Yeah. <laughs> no, not at all, no, no. The, the the officers mess is uh, it's called the O Club in America, yeah. which is yeah, of course it is. It's just an O Club, isn't it? It's not like a mess. What did the O stand for? Officers. Oh, of course, yeah. yeah, yeah. So Sorry. the bar at Shepherd was called Duffy's. Yeah, just amazing. Uh, just amazing. On a Friday night. Okay, there's a reason for this. So there was a three-week nursing course that went through Shepherd. So Shepherd wasn't just pilot training, it was engineering training. Okay. And one of the things they did was nursing training. And every three weeks, there was a different course. They're called MIMSO, and I don't know what MIMSO start, stands for, but it will start stand for some medical something in-service Organize, or I don't know. I'm making it up. But, but all I know is every three wo- weeks there was a changeover of another 140 nurses came Whoa. through. So the majority of them are hot babes, I'd imagine. Well, you know, statistically, out of 140 or whatever, <laughs> there's going to be a few. There's going to be two. <laughs> <laughs> so what the amazing thing about everybody. In the flying community, in the the Navy, the Marines, the Air Force, knew about the MIMSO changeover day. <laughs> so on that Friday, like our students... I wonder if they did that on purpose. What? I wonder if there was something... To keep like, morale up. Yeah, you know, seriously, but it'd be like, you know, it's just a way of sort of bringing people together. And maybe that was a good idea. I don't know, I don't know. It certainly brought people together. Yeah. Um, so what would happen <laughs> is like late on a Friday... It was incredible because all of these aeroplanes, I'm talking, you know, a long time ago, but um, the visiting aircraft ramp 
would be full of F-14s, F-15s, F-16s, um, Marines, AV-8Bs, which is like the Harrier. But all of these fighters would come in and spend the weekend <laughs> at Shepherd because of the new Mimzo course, wow. which is just brilliant. So what do you mean to come in like there's a fucking parking lot for planes? Massive parking lot. And what, they just, they'd be like, right, I'm just going to fly in there. And yeah. Park plane. Put all the blanks in. So when you when you go somewhere in a jet, you you, you they know you're coming. They give you a slot. You just park there, <clears throat> and then you've got to like we used to call it putting the jet to bed. You have to do all the stuff. You have to like um, uh, lock it, lock the canopy. You you've got blanks to put in the air intake. You've got um, covers to put on over the canopy. All this sort of stuff. They do all that. So how long does that take to sort of close a, close a plane? Hour, so something nice, like that. That's cool. But um, out in Texas, there's nothing to do. They just part and left them. It's nice and warm, isn't it? Wow. But you, we'd walk around on a Friday, on a, like every three weeks. You'd get all of these incredible aeroplanes, F-18s. And you just walk around and look oh, at them. Just, well, we could. We're in flying suits and we're sort of training to be pilots anyway. And just walk around and look at these amazing jets. A-10 Warthogs, all wow. this sort of stuff. Really cool. With a bottle of beer in the hand? No. no. Uh, and then... Then all of those guys would be in Duffy's in the Oak Club bar. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. Like wow. the singing and the debauchery and the uh, drinking and yeah. just absolutely fantastic. And you had the Navy, you had the Air Force, you had the Marines, and they all thought, you know, they were cock a hoop. They all thought yeah, taking yeah, the yeah. piss out of each other. Brilliant. So one of the differences was the Air Force always had scarves. They had like like um like squadron scarves, they had airplane type scarves <clears throat> and the marines just thought that was stupid because they had nothing colorful on them yeah, yeah, yeah. just a black nail name badge and they're very warry you know yeah, sort of like yeah, yeah. all shade around the side of their heads like uh, all that sort of stuff so they <laughs> there's one guy went to the toilet paper got a load of bog rolling just put it <laughs> and he's going yeah yeah i got a scarf man you're like you fuck with <laughs> <laughs> it was really good so all that Amazing. used to go on, but yeah good yeah, very good. It does good, sound like good so memories. much fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds amazing. Our house, so each country had a house where there was the Brit house, we were next to the Danes, the Norwegians, and the students would live in these houses. And uh, I, you can see the Brit house from the steps out of the O Club up front. From where Duffy's is. Brilliant. And God, one Friday, I, ideal. I couldn't get there. <laughs> I couldn't get there. You, I have, you know, 20, no idea how yeah. shit you are at drinking. You've drunk everything under the sun, yeah. everything, trying, you know, I'm going to be a fighter, but i got to keep drinking. You come out, and, and I can just see the house. Yeah. I just got down the steps. But I just couldn't get there. <laughs> I just like, veering off to the right, you know, setting car alarms off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then ended up about, uh, I'm not exaggerating, 100 yards from the house in a bush. Wow. Waking up like two in the morning and thinking, why am I in a bush? <laughs> Amazing. But it was a Friday. We weren't flying the next day. So. Yeah, not till the afternoon. Anyway. Not till the afternoon. <laughs> But like, so if there's this big car park full of planes that these people come over for a jolly like, can't they just get the train or drive? The <laughs> whole thing is that you're flying in, in your jet. There's a lot, and the, it, it but goes, how, how is that like? Obviously, it's going to cost a few quid, isn't it's it? It's a training mission, so they will have done something on the way. But instead of going out of their base, um, and doing uh, air-to-air combat and then going back to their base, they'll go out to another sort of range area, do air-to-air -air combat, and just land somewhere else. And then on Monday morning, they'll fly back to somewhere else, do some air. So where you end up is, like, this doesn't change the price of fish very much. Yeah, yeah. So And there's, there's accommodation for people just sort yeah. of stay over. it's military it? bases, so all that sort of stuff. Well, yeah, so that that's that's not a problem at all. But it's what a way to live! Like, sounds awful, like great for awful. you. <laughs> Somebody's got to do it. Somebody's got to do it. Yeah, it's good of us. Yeah. Did you ever smoke? Were you a smoker back? In oh, the day, no, generally, no, yeah. no, never smoke. No, no, because it's very cool, isn't it? Yeah, well, I just sort of go hand in hand, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but no, never, never did. No, no, never did. W were many um, people uh, on the base sort of smokers back? You know, yeah, yeah. I think it's quite common, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, when smoking was normal, 
and when when you couldn't see the musicians in the jazz club. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you couldn't wear your clothes the next day. <laughs> yeah. Remember that? It's bizarre. Yeah, it's... Um, thinking back on the having the smoking areas in, like, Weatherspoons and stuff, and the pubs and that, and just yeah. sitting in there and just having the ashtray on the table. Yeah. I mean, I do look... Because I'm, 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 I'm going I'm, I'm to quit, but um, I do look back on it with a bit of fondness. I, it, Me it, too. It, but if you go in there... It, like, I went to, on holiday um, quite a while ago now to Turkey or something. I can't remember what it was. And you could smoke there inside. I remember going in and being like, this is horrific. Yeah. This is absolutely horrific. How is this? How did we ever do this? But in, but thinking about it back in the day, in my head, like just sitting at the it's top normal, of Weatherspoons in the smoking area. Yeah. It was just amazing. But a restaurant. Yeah. You know, you, you, people on the table next to you would finish their food it's and like, spark up. Yeah. That's amazing, isn't it? It's so, and it's just like the hell that the 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 fire station. Because there's a pub in I don't know called Fountains that was down, and the smoking bit was downstairs, and it was like it was proper. You know, it was a very closed sort of like dark smokes, but all the plush furnishings and stuff. Yeah. It's, it's just it, 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 cushion, everything. Yeah, but it's just like it's so on fire. Yeah. <laughs> it just it, now, now you think it's bizarre that that was even a thing but back there it's, yeah it's cool well I had um, an HMO a house of multiple occupancy um, in Wrexham and is that for all your children for all my children <laughs> yeah and a few wives yeah. and the one of the rooms when I, w- I went in to I didn't go there very often and when I went in to look at it because it was empty uh, on the floor and under just under the bed were loads of burn marks from cigarettes wow. like this guy like falling asleep or you know because you wouldn't just like you just throw a, a lit cigarette on no, the floor but he must course, have just yeah, yeah. fallen out of his hand or something there's loads yeah. of burn marks that's mad isn't it yeah and on the on the the high quality um blow homes plastic uh windowsills you know he yeah. obviously put cigarettes didn't want to put it out or something but there's loads of these brown burn marks Christ, yeah yeah non-smoking organisation obviously yeah absolutely which might have to become soon went out for a run again this morning um, and I haven't been out because I've got I'm just I'm recovering if you hear me sniffling I apologise I'm just recovering from a little cold type thing yeah over the past sort of week or so um, and went out this morning and I was blowing out my ass a bit. It was difficult, <laughs> difficult yeah. keeping the breath up. Like, so yeah. I, I didn't, I didn't, my, I didn't do anywhere near as well as I did like when I last went out, which was probably a week ago. Um, which is is um, not good. And I, I was thinking as I was blowing out my ass, I was like maybe it was the last three days on booze and cigs as well. It sort of didn't do you help. think that has an effect? Can't do. Can can't. It? Do. Can't do. Surely not. No, I think it's good for you. Yeah, must be. Yeah. Um, it comes from plants, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> all, uh, all of it does. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yes, I'm think I'm considering it. Just weird. It's just annoying because it does make you look so cool. <laughs> it does. <laughs> That's the problem. Isn't Clearly, it, it does. <laughs> but no, I, the, the the main reason that I I still do only so I, I don't smoke during the day. Just when I go out drinking. But the main thing is is because just need to escape. Oh, from in, yeah. from in the bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just got you. Just got to escape for for you know five minutes. Just get a bit of fresh air, you know. Yeah. And there's there's there's, there's, a, um, there's a bit of a I don't know like a study or something on it of, of smoking habits, and the way that you smoke a cigarette is you 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 essentially go out and do breathing techniques. So you go outside, and if the cigarette wasn't in your hand, you'd be going. <sighs> yeah, 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 yeah. That makes sense. <sighs> Calming yourself down. You'd be doing breathing techniques. Is that a joint, though? Yeah. Um, Held that quite a long time. (laughs) Get into the bloodstream. Um, But yes, just to to calm yourself, breathing techniques. So it's like, you know, know, you'd have to sort of. I'd never do any of the vape or anything that's really douchebaggy like, but. uh, It's something a bit weird following somebody down the street and like they produce. A cloud like Thomas the Tank Engine. And you walk walk into it and it smells of. Berries, yeah, bubble gum or something. It's yeah. just weird. Yeah, I'm not not into that. I don't think I'd never do that. Yeah, um, but I think they stopped that now inside as well. You know, people. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's Dan still does it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, they know that. <laughs> it's all right because he does literally <laughs> do that, doesn't he? 
It's like, well, still smell it, Dan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's only because he's such a lovely like man. Your fucking feet are on fire. <laughs> <laughs> You look like you've risen like the phoenix out of the ashes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's true. Funny. Yeah, it's good. So yeah. is this the... Will this go out? This isn't for Halloween, is it? Is no. That... So we we did discuss uh, having some spooky stories lined up, but I think we should do that next week. Yeah. Because it's, it'll be close to Halloween then. Um, that's funny. Last night we were talking... Um, I was talking to um, Belle your missus um, about a story and she was like you need to stop introducing her as my son (laughs) (laughs) or when she comes and goes hello how are you little boy (laughs) short Um, hair doesn't make her a boy (laughs) and just because she's actually not very tall you can't keep going on about her being a chimney sweep either (laughs) <laughs> Sometimes she does look like a chimney sweep. <laughs> <laughs> um, she's making us dinner late, isn't she? Yeah, yeah. Really excited for that. Yeah, really excited. Um, but yeah, I was telling the story last night, um, and I was like, oh, "You'll have to tell it on the podcast tomorrow." Because I'm pissed. And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, great." I looked at my phone to, at the notes <laughs> earlier, and I saw that. I was like, "There's no <laughs> way I'm telling that on the podcast. There's no way." Come on, you can beep it. Um, it was about the. Um, oh, what was it about? I'm trying to think of how bad it is because my auntie started listening to this now. She told me the other day, and that that's a nightmare. Um, she, I've just got a message. She forgot crackers, so I'll. Get what are you doing, cheese and crackers for us as well? No, f- fish pate starter. Oh whoa! Mm. How from much, from how, the Hebrides, obviously. <laughs> how how much is this going to be ahead? Like. Yeah, we'll work that out. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. cool. Um, shall I tell the story? Or not? Yeah, yeah, fuck it, why not? Um, no, I'm not going to, sorry, no. Um, I'm not going to, it's it's too... Patreon. We'll, what we'll do one day is we'll set up a Patreon for <laughs> um, the podcast, um, and then we'll be able to talk about things that people like my auntie won't be able to listen to, um, and maybe anybody <laughs> else that doesn't pay for it. Because um, it's, yeah, it's pretty sketchy. Um, I had an idea for a business. You've got one, mate. You've got three. I, well, I, what you don't need is another business. I've got two business ideas, but we'll talk, talk about them Come one on. at a time. So the first one is, you know, HelloFresh? Yeah, it's a really good idea. Yeah. So, so you get high-quality ingredients. Yeah. Delivered to your house yep. so you can make good, healthy food for yourself. Is that, right? is that is that that's it, isn't it? That is that is the idea. Yeah, I've never done it, but that, I think that's it. I've seen people do. I've had some friends that've done HelloFresh. Yeah. Um, so my business idea is HelloFat. <laughs> so <laughs> HelloFat is a subscription service, yeah. and every day you yeah. get a box, and you've got two cans of lager. <laughs> Or so, or whatever you get to, I think you get to. Or there'll be different different beer for different <laughs> days, you know. Two cans, two, of, beer, yeah. two bottles of something, you know. Yeah. Nuki Brown, whatever, and then you get a frozen pizza. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's it. And then maybe you put in a packet of crisps or like a Toblerone or something. How is that different to Deliveroo? <laughs> because it's a subscription service. And yeah, you just, I know. You, you just get it, you know. But you don't have to think because the problem with Deliveroo is you've got to order it. But this is this is some real. This is, these are some highly trained people selecting selecting the, which frozen pizza. Exactly, yeah, it's a different things. So every day you get. So it doesn't have to be pizza either. It could be like I know loaded fries that you stick in the oven for. Fat. You know, it's just hello fat. I yeah. think it'd be a great idea. Does it come with a um, a blood pressure monitor as well? Well. You'd put, I don't you, know, you'd you don't want to be that t- guy, you'd, though, do you'd you? You'd put a tub of coleslaw in there or something, wouldn't you? Take, take the edge off. I don't Some know. vegetables. Yeah. In mayonnaise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or like a. I like know. it. Yeah, so. Um, That's good. And there will definitely be, probably on our listenership, is listenership a word? Yeah, I think so. Um, some of these guys will want that. I want it. <laughs> Imagine, imagine having to just taking all Frozen. of the stress out. What about an Arctic roll? Oh, 
fuck. Imagine you just open the box and yeah. you get an Arctic roll. You're yeah. like, oh, oh yes. If only it hadn't melted. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, maybe like, well, like a Swiss roll or something. Swiss then. roll. Yeah, yeah. So um, good. You should, well, yeah. One day you just open it and it's just a six pack of salt and crisps and like a, a, a like a run of Cadbury's crunchies. Yeah, and that's it. That's yeah. Free bentos pie. Yeah, make do. Free bentos pie maybe takes too much cooking. I don't know. Oh, okay. So it's got to be you can eat you it can just straight eat out, out of the, the box, tin, couldn't you? Right. Well, no, it's it's just something that you can just throw in the oven and, and or in the microwave, and you don't have to worry about then. Free bentos is a bit more. You have to take like, the lid off. But it's like forty five minutes, isn't it? <laughs> oh, is that why? You... Th- is it forty five? It's, I don't it's know. been a long time since I've, I've never done one. Done one. Oh, God, it's we been... have got I think one. I've you know, one. We've got one at the back of the cupboard. We've never, never. Is done. that just in case it all kicks off? Yeah, 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 yeah. I like it. So we can cook it in the shelter on a little gas stove. <laughs> that won't work, will it? <laughs> <laughs> um, what were we talking about last time? Um, oh, that mate of mine who's sort of buying machetes and digging holes and stuff. Yeah, but we talked about um, threads, didn't we? Did you watch it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched it. We did talk about us, I what me watching it. Okay, um, but, but I nuclear... thought it was only because f- it was this week because something came up and it was it was showing on. Um, I don't know what I'm. Well, I don't know what. Oh, I watched it, it illegally on the internet. It's a really small telly. Um, <laughs> I. I th- Thought that it's it was on well. BB, <laughs> BBC. Some I people say that's quite normal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what? So you did. So you watched it a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, well, so, but no, we talked about. That's what I was just saying. That's you know, it's like that's Sheffield doom, Doomsday Prepping, isn't it? Yeah. Ready to go, like. Well, so Bell, that was filmed in Sheffield. Mm. Bell comes from Sheffield, and she was saying like. Everybody's mum was like an extra, and it, it, she said, but it was the most terrifying thing ever. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah. Um, so um, I've noticed as well, before we talk about my second business idea, which is potentially serious. Right. Because Hello Fat, I don't know how if that would take <laughs> off or not. You <laughs> might need. Um, it's a lot of investment, isn't it, for people to be... But, I don't know, is it? it's pe- are people too obsessed with healthy stuff nowadays? We've gone the other way, haven't we? Mate, you're running. I know. It's. I think maybe we need a little bit of a balance. We need knocking down a peg or two. Yeah. You know, I think we need... There's too much... Everywhere you go now, it's talking about healthy options and things. Ah, oh, it's annoying, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, does... <sighs> It's like that thing, isn't it? If you stop smoking, stop drinking, yeah. um, you'll live an extra, you know, 15 years. It's like, why would I want to? Yeah. Shitting and pissing yourself, going, oh, yeah. fucking hell, great. That's coming anyway, isn't it? Yeah. Sitting in a, a pool of your own piss, it's mm. like, you know. You, you do that colos- after you night get- out on the moon, <laughs> really, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Got to, I've got to go now, Ben. <laughs> Did you have any friends <laughs> that used to get so drunk that and they that they'd end up um, weeing in their wardrobe um, or somebody else's? That's the point. Yeah, I. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you, 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 a, you know how quickly you came back and went. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you about. Um, uh, I'll tell you about the six magic words, but go on, sorry. Yeah, it's, it's, I the, just, the, you said that so quickly that you definitely, definitely do. No, all, all I was going to say was I got so hammered once um, and I was drinking vodka, I was drinking straight vodka out of mugs. It's bad. It's a bad time in my life. Yeah. In, in this party and we're just get, getting, getting yeah. rat ass. That will drink, do it. Yeah, just drinking straight vodka out of a mug. Uh, and uh, I fell as I, I passed out, didn't fall asleep. Fall asleep so it makes it sound so magical and lovely. <laughs> I I passed out. Um, I, I would like I was trying to be sick down the toilet, passed out next to the toilet, and then I just remember like this this dude came in who was also absolutely hammered and just pissing, but like on my head. <laughs> and I just remember the noise of it. You know, like like a re- someone, drum, like, what's that drumming noise? And <laughs> someone turning an outside tap on the patio, you know, just with no hose on it, just the tap. That's horrible. And it was just like slamming it inside of me, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> that's horrible. And, was, and he was just like, what the fuck? And then we were like, what the fuck? <laughs> 
<laughs> then, like, and I just remember throwing up in the bath. And there's no way if alcohol had just been invented like last week, it would not be legal, would no. it? <laughs> Why would it be legal? It's mad. But it's different alcohols as well. I think I, I don't. I don't drink vodka anymore. Like can't that. That was that exactly. Was like, yeah, that's that my was point. A bad thing. So we had this thing about mezcal and mezcal, te- which is tequila basically. Oh, okay. But mezcal, one of them had a worm in the bottom. Yeah, 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 yeah. We drink that. That is. It's not. It's classified as alcohol. Yeah. It's not. It's a drug. Yeah. It's bonkers. I love tequila. It's bonkers. It. It. You know, if you want a little pick me up on a Wednesday morning, <laughs> liquid cocaine. <laughs> it's weird. Wow. It's weird. And the person who had the last shot ha- shot had to eat the worm. Ugh. Yeah. But yeah, it's Rough. it's. So when I did my, um, this is vaguely, this is not flying story. When I finished my airline pilot's license in San Antonio. Yeah. Um, at, at, at the, the guy who ran so nobody had ever done there are various licenses I keep going back in my head so there's a PPL private pilot's license there's a commercial pilot's license there's a twin rating and then the sort of big daddy licenses the airline pilot's license mm. which you can fly people to Malaga mm. um, uh, but I did the American version of that because I, I had two sons, I have two sons who live in Texas. And I, the plan was to move out there, get a job, fly for the American Airlines. Oh, so nice. when I was leaving the RAF, I, uh, my resettlement process was to get these, um, this license. I went to this t- relatively small school and I said, you know, I want to do all the way up to an airline pilot's license. And this guy said, yeah, yeah, we can do that. And when I got there, he said, we've not actually done that before. And I went, oh, mate, come on, stop it. It's like the the RAF is playing, paying a lot of money here. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he's going, don't worry, we'll, we'll get it done. But you have to do every license yeah. all the way through. So you have to do a PPL, you have to do a CPL, you have to do the twin rating. And then, so I was there for two months or something, um, six weeks, two months. And he organised it all absolutely brilliant. Cut a long story short. I don't know why, we don't need to cut a long story short. <laughs> <laughs> but I finished and I got my airline pilot's licence. Right. I was the first student ever for his flying school nice. um, in San Antonio. Um I can't remember the name of the airport, just outside San Antonio, um, to have an ATP. So he said, we're going to take you out and celebrate because it's good for the flying school yeah, and, yeah. and to congratulate you. He was the guy who, have I told you, have we talked about his club? And I, in my head, I had sort of leather Chesterfields and like he said, I'll take you to my club. Okay, right. It was a lap dancing club. Oh, nice. So, so, so it is... Just outside San Antonio. Bit of culture. Bit of culture. But he said, um, I'll take you to my club. And I went, oh, brilliant. We, so we drive sort of just out of the city. There's a square building with no windows and loads of pickup trucks parked all around it at three o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> and, and I was thinking, where, 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 what is, where was it? What is funny little <laughs> club you have? <laughs> <laughs> we walk in through the doors. He says hello to the lady on reception. Walk through, and I said, "Fuck me! It's a lap dancing bar." Wow. I mean, was it uh, a bit of a brothel as well, or was it just a lap dancing pub? I think it probably there's places like that in the states. Yeah, I, I think I think it, that probably <coughs> was, was an option. Mm. Uh, but he, because he, it, he called it his club, yeah. he walked through the main part of this enormous place up the stairs and you go through some smoke glass doors and on a, an elevated sort of level there are all these high back chairs and a, and a, and a different bar mm-hmm. um, where they said hello Mr. Hedelhauser or whatever his name was I can't remember his name it's only 2001 anyway oh. um, but you could sit in these high back chairs behind the smoke glass and say um yeah, I'd like that lady, please, to come and give me a lap dance. Wow. And she would appear up the stairs. This is not the point of the, the story. This is about tequila. Yeah. So because he was so pleased that I passed this course, yeah. he said, I'm going to get you a really good tequila. Nice. And I went, 
all right, tequila, tequila, whatever. So they brought this bottle over. And have you seen oil and vinegar in the same bottle? Have you ever seen that? The way it separates? Yeah, well, no, but two bottles, so two spouts. Oh, right, okay. So you've, so you've got, got like, it's split down the side, down the middle. Yeah, but, but this one's inside another one. So you've got... Oh, wow. You, you, I've seen them, oil, um, um, good olive oil, but in the middle there's balsamic vinegar, mm. but in a different, like, shape bottle in the middle of the oil bottle. Wow, Well, this okay. was like that. It was two tequilas in one bottle. Wow. And they call it sipping tequila. So, you know, you know how we do the whole... Lemon, yeah. t- salt, or salt, tequila, lemon thing yeah. because it tastes so horrible. Yeah, they they call it sipping tequila. This bottle was, and this is two thousand and one, five hundred dollars. This bottle. Wow. And there are two types of tequila. Clearly, the two different. Yeah, yeah. Colors. It was absolutely beautiful. Wow. Really smooth. Really lovely. And because he said, don't. Don't drink it quickly. That's good stuff. Yeah, yeah. And it is lovely. But boy, did I have a hangover. <laughs> did it get you going, though? Was it good stuff? Yeah, I just... I, do you know, I I was not really involved in all the rest of it. We just happened to be in his club to try out this good... And smoking cigars, I'm not... Yeah. He said, come on, you've got to have a cigar. It's like, oh, man, the next day, I've never been that hungover. Uh, with you finish the bottle? No, well, we drank a lot of it. But nice, yeah, 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 not good. Well, very good, but not the next day. I'd like to, um, for Christmas, can you get me one? Yeah, of course. Yeah, That'd yeah. be nice. I'd yeah. like to try that. That's not a problem. Talking about that process, sorry, I'm hogging a bit here, but it, things jump into your head. That process about uh, drinking tequila, where you do the um, salt tequila. Yeah. So in the RF, they used to do a thing called a kamikaze right. tequila. Oh, fuck. I think I know what this is. Is it's, this with chilli chili pepper? No. Oh. So you snort the salt. Oh, God, yeah. Drink Sorry, the tequila that's, that's what, yeah, and then yeah. squirt the lemon in your eye. Yeah. <laughs> that's stupid. Brilliant. We should do that here. Yeah, we should do. And flaming sambucas, because they're not yeah. dangerous when you're drunk. Don't like sambuca. Yeah. Some of the reasons you associate it with bad times, don't you? Like getting <laughs> someone pissing on your head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Um, uh, what was it? Oh yeah. So I, I can't. Second help, but, business idea. Well, before we get onto that, okay. You've been. You're trying to look all sort of well read because you've got a pair of glasses and a book next to you there. So look at this. So what is that book? That, my friends, is an actual real book with my name on it. I've, I've been on about it before, but it does exist now. It's amazing to be able to get that finish out of the book, considering you did it on your printer at home. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, and thank you very much to the people who have reviewed it. Because um, for those of you who are new... Uh, if you if you want to read it, you you can, but you don't have to pay for it. I'll send you an ebook copy of it. Um, yeah, but it, now it exists. It's on Amazon. Imagine that. Wow. Yeah. That's really cool. Thank you. How much is it? Well, at the moment it's it's like nine quid or something, but it, it goes up from there. Amazing. Some, strat- some pricing strategy, which I've been told. Oh, that you, okay. You you keep putting it up by a quid. Oh. Oh, it's a dollar actually, but put it up by a dollar every couple of weeks um, until you see the sales start to level off and that's its sort of price. But oh, no, it's okay. Yeah, we'll see. Might have to put it down to get some sales. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> going up and you're starting at nine. <laughs> you're taking the piss. Nine dollars. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, which I think is about two pounds, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, it's bad. That's good. Yeah, no, thanks for that. I'm I'm quite proud of it. I think I think it's good. And as I've said before, it's have you read it? Yeah, I wrote it. Oh, um, but um, no, I read it. I should (laughs) all in one go. You should read it. (laughs) But it's not some evangelical rant about you know how amazing Bitcoin is. It's just there's a lot of misinformation about Bitcoin. Um, I do think it's a good thing, but it's not that book. It's a it's so you can have a conversation down the pub. 
and say you can you might get to the end of it and go i still think it's a load of bollocks mm. and it's not going anywhere but at least you'll have some i know it's one of the chapters it. in there was is it all a scam yeah it's called is it all a scam yeah mm. uh, but it's not a rant about you need to do this and you'll be a multimillionaire. it's there's too many of those fucking books out there so it's not that yeah, it's just yeah, information yeah. about a subject that a lot of people don't know about looks about the right size for me as well width wise yeah. yeah look at that if you squeeze it, it looks quite thin. Yeah. yeah. Any more than that in a book, I'm just not interested yeah. in. Well, yeah. Luckily, I made it bigger size, 6.9, so it doesn't look like it's got so many pages in it. Yeah. It's got lots of writing and no pictures. Yeah, which is Sorry, annoying, mate. isn't it? Yeah. You could have put some plain... There's a picture of you at the front, isn't there? There is, yeah. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> you should have put some pictures of, like, yeah. some cash or something. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's not horrible or a Lamborghini yeah. outside some I've got a bit of uh, Lamborghini tree. news actually what so um, the two cars that we talked about we talked about getting the 911 and then getting the Bentley Continental GT something yeah. at Christmas something for my a present to myself some, a nice fast daily driver so money recently um Partly down to the raffles and stuff, which have been doing well with the Vitesse and things. Um, and I'm going to raffle off a couple of my fleets of cars. Okay. So I'm going to raffle off the MX-5 first. Wow. Um, yeah. So I, this, didn't, I thought, you like that car. Absolutely love it to bits. But what I'm going to replace it with is, I would love more. And I, I can't I can't just hang on to I, 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 there's some cars that I will hang on to for the sake of it you know the Rover the Panard the, Panard, the, the yeah. ST because I'm sh I just it's a really fucking cool car yeah and I I, I want to see what happens to the value of it yeah um as I as I keep hold of it but the the MX-5 is never going to go up in value or anything so it's it sort of is what it is um so I'll, I'm going to raffle that off and I'll, I will miss it and I might raffle off the TT. Whoa. For the same reason. The TT is, um, it's never, because there's so bloody many of them, it's never going to rise dramatically in price. That is a, uh, I'm not just saying this, because uh, until we realised none of our children fit in it, we wanted one. <laughs> yeah. We wanted that I, one. I, well, I'm using it as a daily at the moment. Um, and it's that, an I, I think that is an incredible example of a Mark One, it's the right colour, right colour, right, right wheels. wheels. It's got it's, the, it's got the lovely little Bluetooth hidden module using the the, the original stereo. Yeah. Real nice, real, real nice. But I'm using it at the moment; it's faultless. Yeah. Um, but I, I just again, I, I, so the idea is is that the the Bentley Continental GT, I did I did like that, and one of the reasons I was keen on that is because it was like I get one for ten, twelve grand. So if I get rid of a couple of these cars to get some more money in the bank. And I, I'm saving at the moment, saving up, so, and I'm, I'm confident that by the sort of middle of December, I should have been able to save up what I need to go back to the original plan of the 911. Oh, very nice. Um, so I've been looking, and I, 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 I ideally want a convertible for the any chance of any sort of sunshine whatsoever on my skin. I need to need to take hold of really. What would, do you know specifically which model you want? So I want a 997. Um, so it's going to be like an 07 plate, something like that. Yeah. And I want it. Um, so it's got to be the um, S, and it will be the Carrera 4S or the Carrera 2S. Either one of Would those, you, don't mind. One's it, four wheel drive, one's two wheel yeah, drive. Yeah, but is that so? To me, when it says four wheel drive, is that is that more things to go wrong? Is that or is that just a bit? Well, of course. Is it not yeah, like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, definitely. I mean, there there is an added element of, of stuff there, but they don't really. I mean, touch wood, they're not. German, not, aren't they? Yeah, not known for, for problems with that. It's more to do with the bore score and stuff. That's the big issue with them. The what? Um, so bore scores were the um, they were supplied in that just in those few years of production with a three point eight liter engine or three point six. I can't remember. Um, three hundred and fifty five horsepower engine. Um, they the the pistons there was a problem with the cooling, and what that meant was that the um, I think a couple of the pistons would start to oval in shape. Okay. Which meant that the pistons moved in the cylinder enough to score the sides of the cylinder. That's suboptimal. That's <coughs> very suboptimal. 
And the more they scored them, the more things would get past and would make noise and all that sort of stuff. So what would happen is your car would start to run rougher, start to smoke, start to... It just bad things would happen and it'd, it'd make noise. So ding, 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 as, as the engine was running, you'd hear it, you know, the slap. Yeah. Um, so that's something I've got to look out for. There's a lot of cars that have had engine rebuilds and stuff, um, but the this I, I'm, I'm trying to find... I do they like a Carrera 2S. Because okay. I like I like the the just two wheel drive aspect of it. Yeah. Um. Not too bothered about having four wheel drive, but I'd, I'd have either one. I don't mind. It, what it comes down to for me is color and, and spec. Like I want the I want a good spec. They're all silver, aren't they? They're all silver. Pain in the ass, man. Yeah. All, si- all silver. All I mean, they do look nice with a, if, if you're having a soft top with a. I think with a a blue hood looks good yeah. with a silver, but well, the, there's some nicer colors in silver. I'd, I I'd really like a red one. I really want like a dog dick red Porsche 911. I just think, I just think that is a, it's just more of a statement in it really. If you're gonna drive around in a fucking daft car, have it painted a daft colour. You know, yeah, I just yeah, yeah. I don't want it to look like a fucking Ford Fiesta driving past. You know, <laughs> yeah. um, I so you know. But anyway, so it comes down if it's and I I've seen that there's, they do a nice blue, do a couple of nice blues, so that could be quite good. Yeah. Um But it, if it, I want it with lobster claw alloy wheels. Um, and ideally with the um, engine rebuild um, having been done or one that has had a, a Bors scope um, report by a, a proper Porsche place um, and then yeah just, just going to sort of spend the next couple of months finding one maybe you know nice. get, getting it all sort of worked out but hopefully I w- so my, my dream is to be driving it home for Christmas that's why there's like. a song that will fit that very yeah, well. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what's your you Fairy talk- Tale of New York? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Um, what's your thoughts on wrapping? On on no, yeah. what? fucking death of cars. <laughs> wrapping is grim. Why is absolutely grim? Why? Because of the it's why? Cheap, because nasty of- crap. You can <clears throat> see it a mile off. I can t- I can spot a wrapped car from all the way down on the main street there from here. I could tell you if it was wrapped or not. Okay. The colours don't work. It's not paint. It's a, it's a print. It's a colour. It's a transfer. It's not. A, it's not paint, and you what can tell. It's, it's not covered in lacquer. You, you can tell straight away. It's what horrible. What if it's if it's like lovely, tasty classics motifs? Well, yeah, but that's just stickers, isn't it? That's just, that's just like a decal. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like just a logo or something like that, but not like yeah. the whole car. Paint's paint, man. Paint's cool. Yeah. Wrapping is not cool. You're getting good at that paint thing as well, aren't you? Yeah, I love it. I've, got, I've got a big paint project on the go um, soon, which I'm, I'm, I'm excited about. With the rascal. Oh, with the rascal. Um, so that's <clears> good. Are you going to standard Bedford colour? Yeah, I'll just go back to the white. Yeah. Just back to the gloss white, I think. Be nice. Just keep keep it nice and easy. That green Spitfire was lovely. That I think that really nice. paint job was superb. Very nice. It's still tucked away in the shed, that. And I don't want to get rid of that one because I want to do more to it in the future. I want to, and it's a real nice little classic car, that. Yeah. You know, real shiny. I haven't got many like real shiny ones. Yeah, that's the shiny. Fo- the Focus is real shiny. The TT is real shiny. The, Maz- <laughs> the Mazda's a bit patinaed. Yeah. Um, but the, the the Spitfire is real shiny. It's nice. So I'd like to keep stuff like that. I think the Capri will be as well when I've done that. Yeah. Um, and the and the Rascal will be in in, in fine fettle. Forgotten about the Capri. So have I. Yeah, other stuff past going it every day. But this is the thing: you just you can't. Um, you gotta, you've got to just do the things that need doing at the time. There's no rush for that Capri, and it's great that Capri being there because it stops me buying anything else or having any stupid ideas for the project. <laughs> what about like nine eleven? That's, that's different. A, that's, that's, that's for that's you though. That's, isn't that's, it? that's a car that you'll <laughs> probably never see on the channel. Yeah, you know, it'll probably it'll just be a car that I use to get home. I'm going to get a couple of real, or well, get a real hard wearing. Um, seat cover, yeah, um, to put on it, so I can just jump in it with oil and crap all over me, um, and and yeah, just just drive it home and back. Nice, be amazing. Yeah, um, but yeah, I'm looking. At, I think what I might do in it for content wise with it is I'm, I'll mention it. I think on the on the channel and sort of say um, if you want to see some Porsche content, let me know. And I'll I want, I want to record a. I'll start when I pick it up, and maybe six take me six months to record it, 
and just being like living with a 911 and, and what yeah, and, I like and, it and how to buy one and what to look for and like yeah. in terms of the bore score going through all of the issues that these cars might have that's really um, good because there's loads of there's loads of like noise on the internet about different things and you, I hate like the forums and stuff because when I've been reading it's, one person says one thing another person says another it contradicting and you just say like, it, it's so annoying yeah it, one of you's right yeah yeah one of you's right but it's just like it's it's who so you know it'd be nice to document an actual ownership on video so people can't be like oh no that's not right it's like well yeah it is because it's there physically yeah definitely um because there's little things you can do like changing thermostats and things i've, I've been told um to like make it warm up quicker mm -hmm. and all this type of stuff so um to reduce the risk because the 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 Big way to reduce any problems with the bore score is to warm it up properly before you okay. whack its tits off. <laughs> okay. So you know, no more than sort of two and a half thousand RPM um, before you before it gets hot. Okay. Was um, it? With, uh, I just got this thing pump, um, popped into my head about intercoolers. So, so this thing about like the early Porsches, they had problems with intercoolers or something. Yeah, so it was for turbos. Well, oh, was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to, it, uh, intercooler uh, cools the. Oh, that is for the turbo. Yeah, cools the air. In the turbo, makes it a bit nicer. All the oil, okay. no, the air. Apparently, they're they're expensive to replace, and they they went wrong a lot. Yeah, so. but poor Porsche, you know, there, there, there's some like common bolts on them, but um, but yes, I'm really looking forward to it. I I, I think it's going to be, it's I'm just yeah, I've been excited for it ever since I mentioned it months ago, really. Uh, but and, oh, and on the video that I'll do, I think the ending of the video will be a Nurburgring trip in it. Yes. So it'll be like living with a Porsche, and then you know, do, if I do any work to it and stuff, and then. Um, and then you'll be a, a Porsche wanker on the Nurburgring. Cannot wait. <laughs> <laughs> Have you checked whether it'll fit down the drive to your house? No. That's a fucking good. You don't point. get a turbo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, so wide at the back. It can't, I can't afford a turbo. They're hugely massive at the back, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. And you don't get loads more horsepower. You get a hundred more horsepower with the turbo, okay. I think. Um, yeah. Or eighty more horsepower in the in the nine nine seven. Remember those? Uh, some of them had that big whale tail on the back, didn't they? Yeah, I want to get the the like uh, duck bill spoiler um, for the for whichever one I get as well, because I just think it just look a bit better, especially with the convertible. Because convertible's got a weird back end. Has the convertible back end isn't doesn't look amazing, but I want a convertible. So nice. Yeah, That's a yeah. good project. So yeah, it's good. Good fun. I'm just excited for it. It's just, but again, not not necessarily a project. Just something for for driving. Because I've, I've, that's been, not your business idea, is it? No, it'd be a shit business idea, <laughs> wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, the business idea was, um, I'm, I'm, I've had recently a few cars that I've had to dispose of, and it's a problem. So you've got. The Austin thirteen hundred, which I had to dispose of. Yeah. You've got the Nova and you've got the Granada. So yep. three cars that couldn't really go back on the road, um, and everything can go back on the road. I understand that, but it's like if it's worth going back on the road. So those three cars, and there's probably been others as well that I I, I would have done, but I'm like, how am I going to get rid of it? Um. <clears throat> so. Get, selling these things on eBay and Facebook Market, it's so painful. It's a horrible experience. I hate it. You just you get some weird knobheads like, and um, <laughs> and um, so yeah, it's 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 rough. But I, I'm so I was thinking, how else can I dispose of them? How can I get rid of this? Like, let's take the Nova as as, a, as the the example here. So, one thing I'm going to need as time goes on is more car storage. Just for putting stuff like, you know, the Focus, when I get a bit bored of driving that, I'll put it under a cover and I'll just leave it in a shed somewhere, you know. Yeah. Um, and it's the same with other things, like maybe the Panard and the Rover, they can just go under a cover in a shed somewhere. Um, or, you know, as I keep moving stuff around outside the workshop, because there'll be lots more car coming, cars coming for the collection, hopefully. Um, so... I, don't know, did I mentioned the Peugeot and the Peugeot and stuff as well. So like, little things like that, Spitfire, you know. So over time, I'm going to need more car storage. So I thought, how can I combine getting rid of these cars and having more car storage? And there could there could be an idea, and I do have a bit of a skill set for classic car spares. Right. So the the idea in my head would be 
that um and it could be another move for the you know another set of content for the for the channel you know um would be having a, a another quite large sort of warehousey type um workshop yeah where i can store the cars in one corner and in the other corner we have a ramp and that ramp is used to completely tear down all the cars yeah 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 tear it down scrap the shell yeah and the um so with the record shop we do second hand records and there is it's taken it's the record shop's been going for 11 years and we've got to a point now I've perfected a series of um a epos system linked to a website um linked to a like a chain of the product comes in the product gets processed in it it gets cleaned and the product gets um spreadsheeted and it gets imported and then the imports go onto the website go onto the epos system and that creates a product on a website and they get photographed yeah and that whole system can be exactly the same for classic car parts so i could just i could just essentially get the same system that i've spent a lot of money thousands and thousands of pounds developing um and just transfer it over to the classic car parts it's totally doable um so that was one thing i was thinking you get the so say the nova for example now the nova would come in and i'd i'd either i another thing as well as i could do with another mechanic or some sort of car person um, stripping yeah yeah and and just to you know you could strip the cars when they come in and they could do all that bagging and tagging of parts yeah but also um when i need them like on the rascal it's got so much sanding every every panel on it's got about five dents and it's going to take a week of sanding and it just mean if I had someone else to help me that it'd just be a couple of days. Yeah. You know, so just, just to get that sort of boxed off, which would be great. Um so I was thinking, so you know, there's there's uses for the other person there doing stuff like that. But they could strip the cars down, um, bag and tag all the products and just get them and then, you know, whoever's doing I mean, Ellie's doing the social media and the uh, and the merch at the moment. She's probably a bit too busy, but someone else on that on the website, you could have car parts, you could have all this sort of stuff there. And a bloke can have his exhaust then. Exactly, and and the, the Nova it came with two grills, came with all sorts of other stuff. A oh, rough guess, there's maybe two two and a half grand's worth of parts in that car. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I, I'm going to sell it on what on eBay for five hundred quid now. Yeah. So and it's going to and the sell on eBay is going to be a nightmare. So afterwards, what what I I could do is I can just stick the shell on the trailer, or, or even just ring the scrapyard and just be like, can you come pick this shell up, and I'll come and take it away. That's a really good idea. Yeah, and but you could advertise body cuts off it and stuff. You know, body cuts are. I mean, there's you know, I don't know if there's anything on that that would work for you, but like the rear quarter panels, because they're really good. If I could just cut the rear quarter panels off that that Nova and just store them and sell them. Yeah. Fucking hell, you'll sell them. You know, and then and then the two grand worth of parts might go to three grand because you could charge 150 quid per cut quarter panel. Take the wings off it. You know, driver's mm. door. Awesome. Yeah. So that 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 was. I, I don't think I've necessarily massively got the time to to put into doing it, but I'm um, I'm wondering how much time it would take me if I had someone else essentially just sort of doing that and then helping me with the other stuff. Yeah. Maybe. And it and it just means that whatever money that business brings in, um, will pay for the car storage, which is the big sort of thing, isn't it? Cause yeah. You could, have, you could have your racks and racks of car parts. <clears throat> and which would just it it grow over time. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, and then and then you know I've got space next to them for all the cars. So my um, brother ran a, a car scrapping business next to. So when before he took over my stepfather's garage and MT testing station, yeah, he he had alongside he had a compound, basically with with a, a porter cabin in it. Yeah, and, nice. And uh, another porter cabin. So one porter cabin and one end had a, an office. Hmm. And it wasn't the greatest system, to be honest, but just loads of racking in two porter cabins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like, it just been all day stripping cars. Yeah. And, and he was, I don't know, whatever he was, 18 or something like that, because taking things apart is easy, isn't it? So yeah, putting yeah, them back yeah, together yeah, is yeah, a tricky yeah. bit. But my point is, uh, a young lad could do it. So uh -huh. I switched on, like, 19 year old mm. can strip cars for you yeah yeah they absolutely can. yeah and half of the job is is you know but using the same sort of system as we use in the, in the record shop is about grading yeah yeah, um, yeah grading the items but making sure they're clean 
and making sure they're photographed properly, you know. Yeah. So it's just like it's you know it take you. I think it to do the whole Nova, it probably take you two to three days to to strip it completely. Yeah. And but that's with photographing everything, tagging everything properly, and lining it all up. There was um, one of the YouTube channels I watched, Paul Barn Garage. Um, he went to a place in um, near Texas, I think, and it was a classic car parts place. And Oklahoma, that's near Texas. Possibly, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't. You, you know, you can get. I think it's names. five or six United Kingdoms in Texas. Like, yeah. You know, like, maybe that's a good idea for a sticker book. Sorry. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, yeah, good. Well, we used the um, British flag, didn't we? With the Britain with the cars in there. Anyway. Anyway. Um, but and, and they basically they had racks and racks and racks and racks went on for miles and it was all properly tagged car parts. Yes. And the guy was walking down going, "Oh my god, this is a mirror off a 1956 Ford Fairlane." It's like, "Yeah." And it, it's all with pictures online. That you can the key. buy everything. That's so someone could just go and yeah, they've got it. You know, yeah. I stick it all on eBay. Yeah. One of the processes that we built for the record shop. Um, computer system that's um, it's got its own name and everything. It's called Oscar. Um, it is a uh, so you you um, when you upload to the website it, as it comes onto the website you check everything off it will then upload to eBay once you've checked it so you, you it's it's on eBay and when it sells on eBay it takes it off the website it takes it off it's a massively you know it, it, intricate system but, but really really good yeah AI is, is going to help you with that yeah okay you yeah, yeah. you know because now with the with the voice commands on AI it's just incredible have you have you used it. It was a couple of little bits. I don't know if that might be a bit too complicated for it. Like, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It, when you think of it, has all of the internet access to all of the internet. So you could say, develop me a process for you know um, categorizing car parts. But it's it's not, it's not <laughs> developing the process. It's the building of the back office with diff on our back office we've got we have to pay subscriptions for and we've bought like five different plugins uh, okay so plugins for like an extension to go to ebay to talk to ebay and for the for ebay to talk to the website it's a plugin extension you've got to buy this you've got to do this you subscribe to you know it's it's a very very complicated but what system. would be good is like when the guy is taking the thing apart <clears throat> he can say into and th this is definitely doable. Hmm. Uh, if he, if it was a robust phone or something, you can say um, front right um, driver side caliper for a um, you know, nineteen ninety four Nova, hmm. and and it would just list off. But he can speak into it, and, and so he he keep listing stuff. Yeah, there's yeah, definitely yeah. ways to do that. You, again, you're probably right, but you'd have to have a physical tag attached to the indicator or to the mirror so yeah. so you, but you could unless you could speak into it and it's attached to a, a sticker printer and instead of that you just put a sticker on it so it would you you, you shout into it and it prints onto a sticker and you stick don't a sticker on something no you don't have to shout into it though no. um <clears throat> but yeah so i think I, i'm i'm, I'm going to give some consideration to it because you know it's like when with the granada as well it's the two liter pinto engine and box i'm underpricing it at 750 quid in my head you can't buy them, and that's a reconditioned, rebuilt engine. It's like proper good. I think for the engine and box, it's a grand all day long, like you know, yeah. all day long. And I think that that is, you know, it's just it can sit there until it sells, and it will. You know, there'll be someone out there with a project car that's got a two liter Pinto in it, and they've just blown it up, and they need another one. Yeah. You know, so I don't know. I'm tempted. Sounds good. And there's also loads of other stuff that I get that is like. When I'm when I'm working on the car, I might change bits, but the old bit still kind of works, and still there's nothing wrong with it. But I've just done it because like I might have upgraded the stereo, but the old stereo still works. Yeah, you know, get it online and stuff. And just I just feel like there's a, there's an opportunity for me to not um, be uh, showing my ass so much, you know, losing money like yeah. So would you yeah. have a big scrapyard dog on a chain? <laughs> yeah, with like studs yeah. on the chain. Scary rock pilot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I would. I would. Have like a Doberman. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I would. I think that'd be quite cool. Um, but it, I mean, it, it could no, be. It, that, honestly, that it could just be another. It's like right, you know, a, a video 
you know, showing people like it's right. We've we've the Vauxhall over. We managed to get it running and driving. It is too far gone for the road. Yeah. So next video, we're going to completely strip it down. We're going to you know tag all the products. We're going to show you exactly what we've ended up with. We're going to lay them all out on the floor, and that's like right. From that car, this is what we've been able to get. Yeah. Plus a load of body cuts and stuff to keep other Novas on the road. Yeah. You know, look at what we've been able to achieve here out of this car that was, you know, because the, the guy who I bought it off, he said, he said, when can you come and get it? And I said, well, when do you need me to? And he says, well, straight away, because otherwise I'm just going to phone the, the um, scrapyard and they're going to come yeah. and take it and crush it. And it's like, shit. And, uh, you know, the scrapyard, you know, they, 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 all they care about is processing cars. Like, yeah. they, they're not, they're not going to tr- waste their time going, oh, do you know what? We'll, let's try and sell this. Let's try and do that. I've, I've talked to them, you know, that, and uh, the one that I bought the Vitesse off. Um, and they were like, it, to store that Vitesse for someone to come down and kick the tires away, it was a, it's a bore lake for them. It's just, you just move it on, get it gone. So, and, you know, yeah. thankfully they, they, they did so I could buy it. But that Nova, it might just be like squash off to China. And then all of those bits lost. How many times has that happened? It's happening every day, isn't it? Every day. Little little blocks of metal. Yeah. So sad. Out the back. And it's amazing how many cars do get scrapped every day. It's nuts. I've seen like uh, one of the busier um, scrapyards. It's like one every twenty minutes, and you're like, how are they getting a car once every twenty minutes? Like you know, amazing. where do they find it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they just cube. Cube, cube, fuck, fair dues. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. Um, and it's different standards as well, you know. It, it, something feel, fails an MOT over here, mm. but that's not the case in other countries. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what happened to my mum's scenic, didn't it? That went off to Poland. Oh, did it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they could just smash the DPF out over there and re- remap it, and it's fine. We can, we can do that over here as well, but uh, it, it is, can be a bit sketchy. Yeah, yeah. If it starts to fail on emissions, you're fucked basically because we haven't got a cat <laughs> or a dpf sorry. or if you can get your leg through the sill yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> but it doesn't matter over there shave the leg down on the road um we're an hour and a half should we call Good. it yes um nothing else you wanted to talk about now is there anything else well, there's, to all this, there's all this stuff there is um, um we'll do this we'll do the spooky halloween next week um i've been thinking of uh, a story involving um, uh, patches, MOT patches on patches, and just like <laughs> yeah. I remember just driving down the road once and feeling this car sort of like the chassis moving and crabbing and thinking, oh, it's a bit scary. <laughs> yeah, it's looking out the scary. driver's window, going down the trailer. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. Let's go and have some food. Yeah. Thanks very much for watching. If you like this kind of thing, um, drop us a subscribe. That'd be dead cool. See you next week. See you next time. Bye.